Um, yeah, so Docker, as uh, Helen already mentioned, is very, very hot. There's another topic that I work with that is very hot, that's so hotter than hot, is SDN, Software Defined Networking. And those two combined, it's just, uh, it's just a supernova. But the thing is, uh, as, as you heard before, somebody mentioned that if you start to use Docker in production, you probably want to use some kind of multi-host networking. And right now, when you start using Docker, you don't really get much help with that. Um, you, you use Docker usually with one host. You can, you can do simple service discovery with linking and so on. But as soon as you want to contain, contain, uh, have deploy containers of several hosts, and you want to have them to be able to talk to each other, you have to look for solutions. And uh, what I have discovered is that most solutions have been quite hard to get started with or difficult or complex. Um, a lot of people use some, maybe implemented with some open v switch, uh, with some v switch uh, open vSwitch, or they, maybe they use some, some control from OpenStack or some other kind of last clustering and networking solutions. And then the last, uh, late last year, I stumbled upon a project called Weave. And the Weave, I think, is so simple to get started with that I thought it's worth to to just go through, walk through how, how to set it up and how to use it. Anybody here have, has used Weave before? Okay, already a couple of us. Are you? Good. Um, so, just first a little uh, background. Uh, it's a company called Setio. They released Weave last November to the public. And then a few months later, last month, Docker actually acquired Socket Plane, which is uh, uh, competition to Weave. They basically do the same thing as Weave does or they did. And Docker's plan is now this year <coughs> to, to release something on their own. And what they really want to do, a lot of people are scared that the Docker, Docker they're going to just build this huge, the Docker engine is going to be, become this huge binary that, that just the very opinionated, opinionated framework. So they, what they call this, call, they call it batteries included but not but removable. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is that when you install Docker in the future, you will have some multi-host networking support, but you can easily switch it out. So the guys at Celio that developed Weave, they actually like that Docker is buying the company's soccer plane because that means that Docker now really is serious about networking. Um, soccer plane, I think, is also a very new startup. It also was founded late last year. It's uh, from some engineers from Red Hat, I think, that they basically do SDN, controllerless SDN. So, um, what do you want to do? Uh, what you basically want to have is you want to have a whole bunch of containers, so those boxes here, and you want to have them on, a, on their own network so they can talk to each other independent of where they are on, physically. <clears throat> and that's what Weave helps us with. Um, so what you do with Weave, well, if when you we use Weave, the network that the containers sit on is basically one, it looks to the containers as one big Ethernet switch. And then um, each host, oh, that's a wrong picture. I thought I had another picture here. No. Um, each host that r hosts your containers is called a, a Weave peer. And there you run uh, the Weave router, <coughs> itself a container that actually routes the traffic from host to host if it needs to. So um, I just go quickly through the setup phase. How do we install the Weave? On each host, you just grab the binary file from GitHub right now, and uh, ah, and you're good to go. Once you did do that, you have to launch the, the routers. <coughs> and uh, you, the, on the first host, you just run we launch, and on the subsequent uh, hosts, you you point those routers to the first router or any router already running. And once you're done with that, you're good to go to start containers. And since Docker right now doesn't have any support for pluggable network, uh, networking, um, you actually use a wrapper that Weave supplies. So instead of using Docker run, whatever, you write Weave run, and then supply the IP address that you want the container to, to, uh, to get. And then the rest, after the IP address here, is just uh, your regular Docker run arguments. Um, one thing to note is that the IP address that you supply here, when you supply the IP address that the Docker container is going to get, you have define your application network. So if you, let's say you're from two different hosts, 
the first one, the second one, and you start those two containers on those two different hosts, and then the same subnet, then they can talk to each other. If you would choose a different subnet here, which is not, uh, let's say, if, if you're in, the, in in different subnet mask, you will have an additional new application uh, network that uh, is isolated from the first one. So uh, let's just see how that would look like. Question. Yes. If you want to make a router between different subnets, do you have two IP addresses over there, or um, if you want them, you will connect it. I th I think so. Okay, let's see where I have my windows. So I have one host. Okay, you can barely see. Now the first thing I do I launch you can actually switch the view so I see what I type. That was the wrong button. <laughs> I pushed sleep instead. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone is tall enough to just scroll it a little bit so we can see everything? Or just stand on the chair? I don't know what happened. That's probably my, my bad. No, no problem. Thank you. Okay. Uh, here. So. On the left side, I have one host, and on the right side, I have another host. The first one, I'm just going to run. I already installed Weave naturally, and now I'm going to just run Weave, Weave Launch. And what that does is actually starts the router as a Docker container. So if I check my process here, I have one Weave container running now. I do the same on the other side. And now I have to supply the IP address of the first one. And that's the host address, though. And now I have that container running. So now I'm ready to start containers that, uh, that on the on the own uh, container network. So uh, sorry, I'm gonna actually maximize the window here. I'm gonna weave run. Choose an IP address. Something I remember. And now the rest of the of the command is just my Docker uh, arguments. Could you try to add two IP addresses from different subnets so we can see if it's working? I mean, yeah, I'll try it later. <laughs> Sorry. That's no, okay. You're going in his Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to run a Debian container, nothing. <coughs> And one thing to note is that Vivo always starts the stuff in, in the background. So either, uh, I'll have to attach to it later. I go to the other side. Now I'm on the second host. Ah. I choose a different ad address on the same subnetwork. And here as well I start Debian. And let's attach to it. So I'm in the container on the second host, and I'm going to try to ping the first container on the first host. And that's really what I said. That really is simple. Every, all the other solutions I tried before were harder. I don't know. Uh, um, what Weave is actually doing is those routers, they, they, um, they tunnel the traffic, Ethernet traffic in UDP packets. Um, it does it in user space, so perform it, um, as more the more traffic you have, the more CPU load you have. So I mean, there's a whole bunch of things that are not ideal, but for many use cases, I think this is really, really that simple. Um, it also recovers from failures. So if if one host or or several hosts just die, the rest of the network will still be alive, and as soon as I show up again, you can continue. Um, Question. Okay. Let's port the VXLAN to the terminal. No, not yet. I, I think there's some discussion on GitHub. Yeah. Right now it's the only user space and it does just... Uh, um, yeah, uh, I know that I've seen some discussion. 
And I think soccer playing, they do more in perm space, so I'm not sure. And that's where really where maybe we will get some better uh, um, performance. I did some testing. I have two uh, hosts uh, in, um, on Amazon on different availability zones. And I tried some bandwidth tests between containers on the overlay network. And I was able to get out 600 megabits per second. Uh, and then and, and really, but the CPU was maxed out on, on the smallest uh, units. What, what, what area did you try that at? Frankfurt. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I can actually, let's, let's see that. Let's see if we get the same performance. So um, I'm not going to. Frankfurt has only two availability zones. Yes, that's true. Um, so I'm going to start. Uh, I use a tool called I, I, IPREF. It's for perform bandwidth. IPREF, yeah. What did I, I, not IPREF, IWordPerf, thanks. So let's start a server. Does support Django frames as well? I don't know. So now let's do. I'm um, in the second house, I'm going to test the bandwidth towards the first host. Just made a simple uh, image with, with iperf installed. Uh, three, I think I had cho chose. And now, yeah, th that's the problem now. Uh, since it's backgrounded, <laughs> uh, now what did I do before? To, uh, Attach doesn't really work. I, no, I did something else. What are you trying to do? The thing is, I, I try to. I want to see the output. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't get it, get it through. No, I'll try. Huh. Can you execute? <laughs> yeah, I can execute and try it out. Uh, for instance, I never really got past that point. Um, let me just. Try something else. <coughs> so If I can remember correctly, it was on three, the server on the other, on the other end. Uh, around 600 megabit, I think I achieved. And, and then, if you would actually, now I'm using on two, two, uh, T to two uh, micro instances on, on, on both ends, and the, the CPU really maxes out, uh, or usage is, 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 is maximum. So, uh, yeah, it's probably not very performant compared to other solutions that are, because you do a whole bunch of uh, context switches being used in kernel space, but it's good for many use cases. Yes? But what is your uh, the idea about bottlenecks? Is it like CPU or that uh, needs to upload all this hardware? Yes, I think so, and that's what, what I understood is that's what they're also working with. Have you done an iPerf between the two hosts themselves to see the difference? Yes, um, I have, and I've got up to uh, Roughly a factor ten better. Um, yeah, so uh, that was just to get going. Some, some. Um, if you go back to 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 the slides, another way to start to attach containers to the network is uh, to actually run it the regular way, as you will Docker run, and then use command weave attach, and you can attach a container to the application network. And I think that will be a way to attach it to several networks. I'm not sure. We can try that later. Oh. Um, another another uh, <coughs> use case is uh, we people call it um, service exporting and importing and, and binding. And basically, the idea is that if you have that cluster or your container network here, and 
any container in that network wants to be able to access, for instance, a database that is connected just to one host. That's one use case. And the other use case is um, you have anything outside of, of your Docker public network, for instance, a public internet, you want to uh, reach some kind of container, application container. I mean, the containers right now, they're happily talking to each other, but nobody can really reach them from the outside. So that's the uh, service, service exporting. And for that, they have another command called weave expose. You, you run that on the host, and then the host becomes a member of the application network. And once you're there, you can, uh, you can basically, they, they say, you, uh, well, use IP tables and send some, some routing rules to be able to route in and out of the application network. So um, I have a, a third host that's not in the network. Yep. So first I have to launch the, uh, launch the reroute as well here. If I remember the host, okay. IP address. So I tell it the IP address of one of the other routers. And now I tell it to, I want to expose this host, the third host that doesn't run any containers itself, uh, application containers, to the same network. And now from the host, should be able to ping my application containers as well. The first if config. Yeah. So what you see here in if config, you have a, you get a new bridge, a new bridge, um, and then for each member of that uh, local member in, in the network, you get a you get a v, uh, VH uh, here you get an interface pair. I think those two are from Weave. The thing is, top or from top, no, that must be from Weave. They are BRCTL show. Is it V? BRCTL. BRCTL show. Oh, uh, bridge control, yeah. Uh, BRCTL is not uh, wrong. Then yeah, I think I don't have it installed, I guess. Ah. You know the package now? I think the bridge you build something. Show. Show. No, show. 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 <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Everybody, everybody see that? So we have two bridges. The regular Docker bridge and, and, and the Weave bridge. Um, I've seen that uh, there's some, some chores on the network that they actually create a Weave bridge first, and then they use that as the Docker bridge. Uh, they use Docker to be able to uh, they let Docker use the Weave bridge instead of their, its own Docker bridge. The problem there is a little bit chicken egg problem. You need to have a Docker running to be able to create a Weave bridge and. Yeah. But uh, that's that really is a limitation right now. It's that's why you have that wrapper script, um, and it's the same if you use Socket Plane. Uh, it's the same thing. They also have a Socket uh, wrapper script for Socket Plane, so you write, basically write Socket Plane up uh, run and then the rest as you would do with Wii. But it doesn't use anything fancy like OpenB Switcher. No, it's just Linux bridges and normal stuff. There's some uh, package capturing. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I think they implemented their own okay. in, in use this space. And how does this compare to Flannel? Isn't isn't that what Core OS? In I think Core OS uses Flannel. Yeah. Uh, do they develop it at least? I think so. I'm not. I'm not that much. I don't know much about Flannel, but I I can recommend you to re read a blog post by the Core OS guys. It's called uh, "What Makes a Cluster a Cluster," and they call it the Cluster OC Layers. And uh, they actually compare, if you look at the cluster resources layer, which is the networking layer in their lingo, Flannel is on the same layer. So I, I haven't looked into Flannel, but I have an understanding that that's uh, similar functionality. Yeah. They, they actually give the host the whole network segment, and then they tie the different network segments together. OK. That way, they don't have to fiddle with ports for the doctor, so that's maybe nice or something. Mm -hmm. OK. But really, the big picture is is uh, is where, where does that stuff fit in with the rest? Where does it fit in with service discovery, for instance, and and, and all? Uh, 
and in the clustering. So uh, uh, if you haven't read that blog post, I think it's a really good overview of where how the POS, POS people look at the whole thing, and I think it's basically uh, there's nothing uh, debatable about it. I mean, it is it's a very cleaner way to to see the stack. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it, just a quick word about service discovery. Um, you can use basically anything, but the Weave guys de developed something called Weave DNS. And uh, what you basically do is you, is when you, after you did Weave launch, you do also Weave start DNS. Uh, you have to supply the, uh, supplied also an IP address for the DNS server. And then when next time you start a container, you use the flag uh, Weave with DNS, and then you give it a host name in the Weave the, uh, local DNS uh, in subdomain. And then you do that on every host, host, and then the containers can uh, talk to each other by host name. Yes. Sorry, is there some way to get the manual IP assignment? Um, so if you if you manage to use the Weave bridge, uh, uh, if, if you manage to get the Docker engine to use the Weave bridge instead of its own bridge, then Docker can uh, um, can assign IP addresses. You can basically use, or you can use any, you can use DHCP. I would assume, um, yeah. But I've seen some examples when they when they get around it by just letting Docker continue, uh, handle the IP assignments. But the, the thing with the, with, the, with the service discovery in that example is it doesn't really, you don't really have to use VDNS. You can use whatever you already use or something else if you want to use console or, or anything else because it's really it's just a networking like nothing else. Um, yeah, I think we talked a little about the future. I think uh, one thing that's going to happen that the Docker people they're going to they they develop that continue developing on the Docker Docker extension model, so that you will be able to just plug a network stack or a network driver where we I expect we will be one one of them. Uh, I hope for performance improvements, uh, some hardware acceleration, for instance. But then you will have to use different solutions. And uh, I think it will be really interesting to see, I see how it plays out between the, the, the plays around right now. And I think it really is, it's moving really fast. Uh, if we would look at it in a month's time or two months' time, it will look quite differently as well. So there's a whole bunch of new initiatives starting and, and other initiatives starting. So we'll see what, where we are in, in half a year's time, for instance. Yeah, any more questions about Weave? I think I haven't, I have used it a little bit mostly for testing because we do a whole bunch, of, we, we deploy a whole bunch of containers to do network simulation and then Weave, Weave is a really nice tool, but we haven't used it in, 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 in a larger extent. Do you know, know anything about the high availability aspect of it? I mean, in your example, we joined on one node, so start one and then the other one joined in on that. You, can, you just have to join to any other router, it doesn't have to be the first one. So it's a sort of a peer to peer masterless? Yes. Right, cool. So if, if just part of your network dies, the rest will still right. be alive. So there's that's the soccer playing people that call uh, do something similar called S controllerless SDN. You don't have a central control that you have to have high availability on. You have a <coughs> and they uh, yeah yeah. So if if, if that's something that you try it out, it's really easy to get going. Thank you.